So let's start with the rucksack, guys. You can come around like real close, you, you know, so you can ask questions while I'm pulling this stuff out. I'm gonna to start top to bottom. Um, I will admit this is a little bit smaller than like, this is technically like a three day pack. So um, I added the sustainment pouches on the side because this is something that adds a lot more uh, to what you can keep and they're accessible. Um, lots of times we start stacking stuff in our ruck, it's like cool, but it's at the bottom of our ruck and we can't get to it, right? So, so I like the sustainment pouches. These are just extra magazine pouches on there for a little bit of weight. This is my e-tool. Um, but let's get into it. So in the top right here, accessible. Um, this is just like a little weatherproof, waterproof bag. These are Magpul's DACA pouches. I really, really like these. Um, but you can keep batteries, things that you don't want to get wet, that you don't want to get exposed to the elements. So this could be batteries for your radios. It could be batteries for, you know, your headlamp, like anything, double A's, triple A's. This is where you want to keep that stuff, right? Um, another thing you can up top here, if you want to, usually people keep it on their chest rig, but also like documents and stuff, having another DACA pouch in there for maps, for paper, for anything you don't want to get wet, books, you know, if you have a field manual you want in there, like the Ranger Handbook is always really good to, to keep on you. Um, so that's up there. I've got some extra little admin slots here for like extra magazines if I want things up top. The biggest part about like at the top of your ruck, this type of thing, this is where you can, you know, zip in there and grab something, right? Um, one thing I will say, well, it's on my little knife in there. Um, your ruck, we did this recently where we went on a ruck and somebody had put Ear Pro or something on their their bag, um, and he was it was like really really dark We're in the middle of the woods. He asked someone to go into one of his pockets and grab something out of there and then zip it back up. And while the guy was doing that, I think he like knocked the Ear Pro off or something. Um, and it reminded me of in the military like wherever you keep what we call our sensitive items, okay, things that are high dollar items. Um, for you guys, it's on your paycheck, so I mean lose it. At, whatever but you know like if i had my night vision in this top pocket i wouldn't let anyone touch that pocket besides me because i'm now trusting their responsibility to like pull that out or you know what i mean so if you have sensitive items or things that you're, are really valuable make sure you think about who you're trusting to go in there and like open said compartment up right because uh, it's late it's at night people don't pay as much attention as we'd like them to they don't care it's not their sensitive items it's ours um okay this pocket right here this is kind of a little thing that I like to keep top and accessible. So this is just a little, if I need to, you know, whatever, you can tie vegetation onto this. This is a little sniper thing. Um, you put like these little loops on there so you can hook vegetation on there. So this would be a really cool, these are inexpensive and easy to make. I could use this to, maybe we're in a more visible area and I have to ruck through it and I wanna just like blend this in a little bit. I can take vegetation and tie it on there. I can throw it over a gun, throw it over my shoulders. I can throw it over a lot of things. So it's just a little extra piece of veil. Um, it's not because it's see-through it's not going to do anything for thermal so you know keep that in mind um i mean it might do a little but not much um but having something like that uh ralph camo makes a really cool one that's not quite like this but they make one that will actually like help with thermals and stuff um and i would recommend those or should be seeing one of those at the capstone event so that's the top pocket um just like i said nothing crazy in there little knives and things like that or you could throw you know some if you wanted to it's never a bad place to have um if you have extra space just think this is stuff i want to be able to get to quick because it's on the top of my ruck right okay um now we'll pop open we'll do sustainment pouches actually first so this ruck actually didn't come with these sustainment pouches but i added them on because i remember in the army always liking to have these because they could just there's stuff sacks you can get whatever you want out of them so Got a little chem light with 550 cord on it. 550 cord is definitely one of those things you want to have in the field. It's really helpful for all sorts of stuff. Headlamp, um, some random zip ties in here. These gloves are supposed to be with my kit. Um, I have a balaclava and that's it. So I have extra space. Generally what would go in here is probably my MREs. That's where I would stuff MREs so that like, um, and what I do, depending on how long I'm gonna go, I'll take an MRE apart and I'll field strip all the stuff out of it that I don't need and I'll just leave like the main meals, the high calorie stuff because it will allow me to like, MREs aren't good anyway. So <laughs> I get rid of all the crap I don't need and then you'll be able to fit like twice as much food so that will kind of extend your range or your ability for a little bit further. Um, so don't be afraid to, you know, MREs or whatever meals you're, you're doing that way, you know, um, the old saying ounces equal pounds and all that stuff, like it does start to add up. So I field strip a lot of that crap out of there that I don't need. Um, okay, other sustainment pouch. 
Um, these, I just brought these out because I was thinking about I might throw these on my belt. These are just mag carriers, so normally I wouldn't keep those in there. And I think all I have on this side is just my poncho. Yeah, so more open space, more room here. I just have a poncho here. Um, I have water in here, but I don't have any food in here. So there's always little things that I would add, uh, put more into or put less into. Okay, Camelback sitting right at the top here, um, just because I, I knew I was gonna pack this again. So this Camelback is great. This is called a Source. I think these are called Source. What's so awesome about these is this whole lid slides off and it like opens up. Um, and every Camelback that I've ever had has turned to disgusting because you can't get in there to clean. These are not that way. These are like 30 bucks on Amazon. So I can't recommend those enough. I really like those. Okay, um, now top of the rucksack, wet weather top, okay? So this is just a ghetto like waterproof jacket that I just spray painted. Like that's all, it just has to be something you probably want to get like an XL or something big that fits over your kit. I like having these up top. I never once in the army used wet weather bottoms unless it was absolutely pouring rain, like drenched. Um, majority of the time, just a wet weather top will work. Um, this, something that I randomly threw in there. Um, like I said, you'll wanna have like, some people carry clip, clipboards and stuff, but you'll wanna have like, this is for targetry. Um, so this has like different people. This is more of a sniper thing. Um, I, that this just got randomly thrown in there. So you would have like a documents place where you'd keep a lot of this stuff. Hey, do I wanna keep a book? Do I need to keep, you know, a target package? All that type of stuff. Um, okay, and I have this guy right here. So this is gonna be my main waterproof stuff sack. Um, so this is gonna have, uh, this is where you're gonna put your clothing, okay? So a change of uniform could go in here, socks, everything that you wanna keep dry is gonna go in like a weather waterproof weather bag. The cool thing about these is, there's actually a trick where you can fill these up with air, put them in the center of your rucksack and your rucksack will float. So like when you're crossing rivers and stuff, you can actually trap air inside of your rucksack and it acts like a kind of a flotation device to get you across. And then the stuff that you need to keep dry is still gonna stay dry, right? So having some sort of a stuff sack, I think we did it with garbage bags when I was in, but having a stuff sack like this, you can absolutely trap air in this, put it in the center of your ruck and it'll help you uh, go across like a stream or something. Especially if you don't know if it's super deep, the last thing you wanna do is carry your dead weight rucksack into a stream and then be like, oh, it's actually five feet deep and then drown with your rucksack, so. Um, okay, this is a sleeping pad. Um, in the army we call these puss pads, but <laughs> they're actually really useful. Uh, I thought it was really funny. Like at first when I got in the army, I thought these were kind of dumb and I was like, why would you bring that? And then I realized that it's not so much to deal with like sleeping on rocks or whatever. It's literally body heat. It puts your body heat back up into your, and it's really crucial. Um, so as much as they'll be like, oh, you don't, it's something that is good to have. So a sleeping mat is gonna take the, like the ground when it's cold will suck, will literally suck the heat out of you. So having something that reflects that heat back up into you, it, it will be so much more important. So um, this one was an Amazon one. This is a really easy one that you, like the bag blows it up. So you like attach the bag and can blow it up with the bag. Uh, so yeah, th I think these are worth having, especially with how small and light this one is. It it's worth having. Um, okay, I've got some random plastic bags or just this type of stuff is always good to have. Just trash bags, plastic bags, things that you can, you know, waterproof stuff, whether it's maps, whatever you need to use it for, carry a bunch of random crap. You never know what you're gonna need. So little plastic bags are always something that I just kind of keep in here. Um, I have a canteen and a canteen cup. Um, this is good for extra water source. You know, I only have that one Camelback, so it's good. Uh, the other thing I could add on this, but I'm running magazines instead is, you know, having a source of water. I mean, I'm, it's gonna be on my Camelback, but if, if I did have to drop this pack, it would be nice to have more water. Generally, you're not dropping your pack. There's too much stuff you care about, so you're gonna like move with it. Um, canteen cups, good for cooking stuff. So you can take this, you could put some water in it, heat the water up, you know, try and purify a little bit of water that way uh, for eating your meals. And Murray's having just like a canteen cup is a good, um, if someone has coffee and they wanna make coffee, uh, important and good that way. Uh, over here to the right, um, this is a little water purifier, right? Um, I've never really used this one, but you know, life straws work really well. There's all sorts of different, like there's some that you can plug right into your Camelback. So you just scoop water and it filters as you drink it. Um, so this is just the same one that I had in the army, just left over. Um, so yeah, having a little bit of water purification is a good idea. Uh, weapons maintenance kit, little Otis cleaning kit. Uh, the only thing I don't think this has in it, which it should, but doesn't is, oh no, it does CLP. Never mind. I'm good. 
Um, I thought I didn't have any CLP in there, but yes, weapons maintenance kits are important to your kit. Then the very, very bottom is my sleep system. Um, it's a military like bivy sack, uh, outer bivy sack, which keeps you, I'll just pull it out so you guys can see. This, I got this a long time actually, believe it or not, before I was in the army. Um, comes with three different bags and you can basically say, uh, it's really cold out or it's summertime. So like right now it's starting to get chillier. I'd probably be okay with this still. Yeah, so it's basically what this thing is designed to do guys is it, like I've woken up in rain in this before. Um, so they, I think it does, the nice thing to keep in mind about a lot of this military stuff is it has insect impellent or insect repellent, like at, into it. Um, and I feel like it works because I never got tore up too bad by bugs. Um, but yeah, so this thing is really, really nice. And like I said, it has, it comes with three bags or it comes with two bags. It comes with this like lighter summer bag and then it comes with a heavier bag. You can put those all together. Um, this is one thing that works very well, but it's big, it gets heavy. Like in the lightweight configuration like this, it's not horrible. But if you put all bags, like all three bags together, it gets massive. So, but I want to say it's rated to, for you to survive down to like negative 30. Okay. Or maybe it's, yeah, I think it's negative 30, but that's survive, it's not sleep comfortably. <laughs> like, I've slept in one of these with the heavy bag and I think with both bags, it like somewhere around like 10 degrees out and it wasn't comfortable. <laughs> like it's not, you're not sleeping good. You're surviving, but you're not sleeping good. Um, the only other thing you guys could add to, you know, to uh, this, which I haven't gotten, is what's basically called a whoobie. It's a poncho liner. Um, during the summer, those are like all we'd bring for sleep systems. We wouldn't even bring like these big things. We'd bring our bivy bag and then we'd bring a, a poncho liner and that's it. And that just cut down uh, what we needed to have pack size and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. Now when you're packing your ruck, you do want to, there's, you know, some considerations. Everyone has a different way that they like to do it. Um, I put my sleep system, which is my least like, like least used thing. I'm going to use that maybe once a day, um, all the way at the bottom with my sleep system, my sleep pad on top of it, and then take my clothing, which is more likely that I'm gonna have to pop out, get socks, whatever. I'll put my clothing above that. Um, just like this. And you just wanna compact the crap. Like it's just, you want less movement, less sway, all that stuff in there before I forget. So I like having my camelback sitting cause it is kind of, it can be sloshy. I like having it sitting up against my, uh, back of my ruck. The other thing about your, your rucksacks and all your equipment guys, um, having them not look like dog shit. Um, having them like the straps kind of maintained so that stuff doesn't get snagged on them. That was always how you can tell the difference between the infantry and not the infantry. Um, was just they, and some of it's rightfully so because they're not using their rucks as much and so like I get it. Um, but all of us like you wanted to have things kind of configured and tied down so they looked clean, they looked uh, together, if you will. Um, so what that means is, you know, getting the slack out of all your straps so that you don't have straps kind of hanging down. Um, now the army was dumb, they would literally be like, these need to be tied down, like these straps that are, I will adjust. They would want those like tied down, you know, cause they look kind of sloppy. But the problem is, you know, you're gonna be moving with this. The nice thing about this ruck, is it has all sorts of little like areas where you can uh, basically tuck things and secure those straps so they're not flopping all over the place. So moral of the story is floppy straps, you know, going everywhere and, and snagging onto things. And it's just something you want to try and avoid on all of the kits that you have. All right. So this I can get nice and snug down. I'll sn secure those in a second. Okay. Let's talk chest rig real quick. Um, okay, so this is a, Velocity Systems or a, uh, what's the other name of the company? Velocity Systems or Mayflower, Mayflower that's it. Um, okay, so I love this chest rig. Um, there's a lot of really, really good chest rigs out there. Um, they're, like I said, it's not revolutionary. It just holds things to your chest and what you need. When I was in the army, we used those, the tap system that was like seven across your chest and those weren't bad either. But um, anyway, so I have this set up as more of what I would say is like a, I'm prioritizing having more magazines on me. Okay. You could always change this. This could go from having all these to having a, a water canteen here, or depends on what you're doing, right? Um, so magazines up front. Um, this is another double mag pouch, just because I haven't run it like this before, I decided why not. 
Um, I have pace beads right here. If you guys don't know what pace beads are, it's basically just beads for counting. It's nothing crazy. Um, this little guy right here, I have this on here just because I don't really use it that often. These are uh, another buddy made. These are just like oh, cuffs, kind of. They, they're. I wouldn't trust them to hold someone for too long, but like if you just needed to search someone and throw them, you know, bind their hands real quick, it, w it would work. But um, I just have those on there because I, they're supposed to be kind of like an EDC thing, but I just kind of lost the perp. It doesn't make sense to me for EDC, so I kind of stopped using it there. Um, up front, face paint. Um, this stuff sucks. I hate it, but it's kind of a necessity when you're in the field, especially for trying to not be detected. A, a backup compass. Okay, so this is just like in case I lose my compass or something like that. That's just a lightweight, easy one to have on my chest rig at all times. Uh, let's put this back in. Okay. Uh, Multi-tool. These are absolutely crucial. These are, everybody had one of these in the army. So yeah, exactly. Just having a good Leatherman, a multi-tool, super useful, super important. I think I left this next one open for what would be, this would probably be a handgun magazine there. Um, this is my radio. This is a TYT little, again, this is something that's really tough being a civilian. Nobody has good comms, it just is what it is. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how to speak in code over the radio. Um, there's a knife right here, an extra uh, knife in case I need it. Um, knives, I don't really see knives as like, unless you have like a push dagger or something like that. I mean, if you can get to it and it's a last resort of self-defense, like sure, but I see them much more as a tool than kind of anything, so. There's a little bit of redundancy in having that knife in there. You, you know, with the Gerber, I don't necessarily need that. That's a little bit stronger of a blade, might be able to cut a little bit more. Um, okay, then this little admin pouch in here. Um, I have different pens and stuff and trying to keep this organized. I mean, you're gonna be reaching here, grabbing all sorts of different things. Um, I put little tabs on stuff if I can so that I can get to it and grab it quickly. Um, so if I need to get to my notes or my right in the rain, I can do that. Um, I'll have another, there's a lighter in here. There's another little uh, bag for like paper. So if I need to stuff that in there, um, this is something that's called a whiz wheel. So this is basically a um, ballistic calculator, but without batteries. Um, so it has like a little disc that you put in there. Um, it'll have like different wind values, temperature. So like you can actually plug in like, okay, this is the temperature. You know, this is the distance that we're shooting. Um, it's been a minute since I've used this, so that's why I store it with all the instructions and everything, just so I can, you know, if I were like about to go out and do something, I'd be like, all right, let's sit down and reread how to, to use this thing again. Um, but it's basically a, you put a specific, or like you can order these and then you can be like, build out your rifle. Like with, I think this is a 14.5 with a 77 grain um, IMI. It is basically what's loaded onto this thing. But I have a bunch of different wheels, ones for like 118 LR for 308. And so that's kind of cool. Does the wheel, does it take into account height over bore your scope? Yes, yeah, all that stuff will be programmed in, like, okay. you, if you order the whiz wheel, you can order, like, what you want from it. I think it's Accuracy First does it, and you can be like, all right, here's my height. Like, it'll ask you all the questions that a ballistic calculator is going to ask, mm -hmm. then it'll print the data set onto one of these, which, That's pretty cool. yeah. Just ask you, because I have, like, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does all the exact same stuff that that Advanced Ballistics does on there, or Applied Ballistics does on there, but then it just prints that data set for you in a cool little wheel where you can, you know, scroll through it. Um, sweet. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much everything for the chest rig. Like I said, nothing super crazy special there. Um, so let's talk, like, clothing really quick, because this is a, an important thing. Um, so, you know, wearing gaiters or like out here, there's a lot of ticks, there's a lot of bugs, there's a lot of things. So the reason that the military, we always hated it, but the reason they have like these blouses is to try and keep some of that stuff from crawling on you and like going in your pockets and your legs and, and all this stuff. Um, and then I know it looks cool, like I brought two tops. This top is kind of like a cool combat top where like the sleeves roll up and it looks really cool. Um, but, you know, th this is a British top actually, and this one's really nice, it breathes great. Um, but if you get into like really dense vegetation or you're gonna go to sleep for the night, it's a really good idea to have something that you can like button up and at least have it like tight fitting. Um, or once you crawl into your, your bag, you're good to go. But lots of times we would just have uh, where we would get to wherever we were going and we just kind of like plop down and pull out a woobie and go to sleep on our rug. So if that's the case, like you don't wanna have all these open areas where bugs can, like big bugs can just crawl. I mean, that's the difference between a bug crawling on you, which is not the end of the world, and a bug crawling in you, essentially. So um, you wanna be able to have type of clothing, if you're gonna be sleeping out in the woods, or you're gonna be doing this for a while, you wanna have stuff that can cover your skin, but can also, you know, roll up and get out of the way if it's really hot and you're walking around in the open. Does that make sense? Um, 
Footwear is really important. Uh, combat boots are actually not that bad. Like these, these don't suck. Um, they're really good for like you grow to love them after you've used them for a while. Um, these Solomons are really nice. Um, I did an entire rotation at JRTC and those speed crosses that you have like that. I did a full one like rucking everything. They work. They're a little, well those aren't the speed crosses are they? Okay, well the speed crosses are like their lighter tennis shoe ones. Trail, yeah. So the I really like for if I was gonna switch like boots to, to shoes, which I think there's a lot of benefits about them. Um, these Solomons are like the little bit more beefed up ones with Gore-Tex in them to keep the water out of your, your socks and stuff I think is good. Um, the one thing I will say is uh, combat boots are nice. They are a pain in the dick if they get wet to like dry out. What's really cool about the Solomons is I've gotten these soaked and you just like un undo the little thing, set them out and like take the inserts out and they'll probably be dry the next day. Combat boots, not so much. So that's why they always make you carry an extra set of boots. With these, I'm not as worried about carrying an extra set. It's not a bad idea, but I don't know. Um, these will dry out fast enough or, you know, with them being Gore-Tex, like the inside of them doesn't get wet unless you put yourself into water up to here. So. Uh, gaiters are a good, another good option. Those are things that you can like attach to your shoe to your hair to like close those off. Those are good for like walking through brush and stuff. But yeah. Um, okay. Uh...